So moving on to number seven uh, is dashboarding. So while this isn't new functionality, dashboarding has been part of uh, PBCS for quite a while now. Uh, but really, they've made a lot of improvements from the different types of dashboarding that you have available. So throughout the year, they've been continually adding more and more chart types, adding more and more for the ability to, you know, combine chart types like we see up in the top right of this image. So, you know, while this functionality isn't necessarily new, they made quite a few enhancements throughout 2017 uh, that really gives organizations a lot more power to leverage them uh, and incorporate them in their, in their reporting processes. On to number six. So this is really around some of the enhancements um, to the smart push functionality that's incorporated with your PBCS subscription. Um, so in the past, um, you know, when you were pushing data from one plan type to another plan type, um, you know, you really had to set up some sort of clear process if that was needed to facilitate, you know, those data integrations. Uh, now they've actually taken this and integrated that process for you. So you have the option to clear data before you push to make sure you're starting from scratch. Um, I think where this comes in, in real handy is maybe when you have, uh, you know, data coming from more of a detailed cube and you're moving it to more of a consolidated level. Um, and there is some, some mapping going on and, and you're uh, not just wanting to replace one intersection but more merge uh, multiple cells into one, um, you know, you're obviously going to want to make sure you clear that data set before you, you engage that, that smart push. So this just kind of takes some of the development time, um, you know, away from you as the end user and integrates it all into one seamless process here. So again, uh, you know, the data mapping with smart push has been a, a nice uh, enhancement to the overall product. So the next one here, again, not necessarily new in 2017, but once again, a lot of new features uh, bolted onto it uh, or tweaks, additional tweaks that give us the ability is valid intersection. So once again, this is Oracle planning's uh, ability to basically define interdimensional security. So again, you're able to say, you know, uh, for forecast periods, you can only load possibly these type of accounts, for example, whereas in your budget process, you're going to enable many, many more accounts possibly, uh, possibly to allow like a greater level of detail during that during that planning cycle. So, you know, it's just one example. We've seen this implemented multiple different ways. Really, you, when used in conjunction with security, uh, can really simplify your overall model and what it looks like, especially uh, to reduce some of the security that needs to be applied. Uh, and again, not new to 2017, but in 2017, uh, you can now use attributes in valid intersections as well, uh, which again can greatly reduce the number of valid intersections you'd have to set up. Uh, if you're able to go tag certain hierarchies with a certain attribute uh, or certain account types with a certain attribute, you then be able to just use that attribute within the definition, uh, really possibly saving a lot of time in that setup. Uh, on top of that, what they also did uh, this year was within dashboards, uh, it'll now incorporate those valid intersections. So, you know, going forward, if you ever have a valid intersection set up, uh, those will only be the options that users would even be able to select uh, within those reports. So, again, in that health check dashboard we have in there, in that drop down, if for the currency USD, we don't have an entity that's considered to be valid for that, it just would not show up in that drop-down list. So again, simplifying reporting options, helping parse out data for our end users so uh, to just make their use of the application a lot easier. 